All right, now, uh, before we get started tonight, I want to remind everyone to go to my website, gorgeousstraight.com, and um, <clears throat> make sure you download my film, Master of the Game. Also, uh, my book, The Road to Paradise, is also available on my site, and also some music is available on Reverb Nation uh, forward slash Gorgeous Straight. You can go out there, check that out. And you can also download my app uh, from Reverb Nation forward slash Gorgeous Straight. Uh, when I was growing up, um, I was born in Seattle and I was raised in Los Angeles. And I kind of did the back and forth thing because my mom's side of the family was in Seattle and my father's side of the family was in LA. So I went back and forth all my life. And uh, there was good and bad about both places. Uh, the, the good thing about Seattle is, <clears throat> you know, a lot of the black people there, um, uh, their uh, ability to, um, you know, communicate uh, the king's language is, uh, you know, is, uh, well, let me say it like this. A lot of guys that were in the game from Seattle, when they would go to other states, people would think they were squares because they felt that the guys uh, uh, spoke like a white boy or something. <laughs> And uh, they thought they were squares because the way they spoke, they spoke proper. But it's an advantage for you to be able to have a, um, you know, ability to communicate and get you into certain doors. Um, L.A., you know, I like the fact that Los Angeles provided a lot of um, visuals for black people. You know, a lot of black people were doing a lot of things. And uh, a black child growing up, they could see someone that's black in a position of power and know that they could also be in that position of power. It was a great thing about L.A. Uh, as I was growing up. I knew what I could have. You know, uh, the sky was the limit. There was no limitations to what I felt a black person could achieve in Los Angeles. You know, Seattle was a little different because there wasn't many black people in positions of power there. So and I think that's a major problem for a lot of black people that are in that area there wasn't really there's not, not a lot of black culture out there you know so kids growing up they're assimilated into white culture and uh, there's not this you know this sense of pride in and uh, blackness that you'll have in LA and, and other places around the country there's this sense of identity you know that um, I think is missed in Seattle a lot of times you know, but, um, you know, this some of my experiences and observations as I was growing up. I was able to use a lot of things from uh, both uh, both places, uh, places that uh, were advantageous to me as I became an adult. Inside, let me just talk and say this about the game. So uh, what I loved about the game in my dad's time was that uh, there was a competition almost, uh, uh, an environment created who could be the smartest or who could be the sharpest and who could uh, exhibit more class. And I like that about that time, you know, and being able to grow up and be around a lot of those gentlemen of leisure that were with my dad at the time, around, around that time, and being able to, you know, uh, soak up a lot of the information, you know, while I was still little you know, was a great um, advantage for me, you know, because I also wanted to be smart. I also wanted to uh, ask my partners, you know, uh, have you read this book or that book and, and you know, have verbal, uh, 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 an intellectual conversation, of verbal sparring intellectually, you know. Uh, today, a lot of guys miss that, you know, because the game has been dumbed down and that might be okay in the ghetto, but, you know, as your life elevates, if your life indeed does elevate, uh, it's not okay there. And they've got people that will laugh you out of the community of greatness <laughs> coming in with that kind of stuff. It's brought low. So, you know, have you ever noticed when, when a movie about the underworld is shown about uh, Italians or, or Jews or Asians, it's always shown... Uh, within a character in the movie, a level of intelligence that 
you know, some of these people exhibited in these movies. But when they show films about black people, they don't show that level of intelligence on most cases, 99.9% .9 of the time. What they show was a bunch of violent guys walking around, you know, killing people uh, without cause and, uh, and violence. They never want to show no black man that's, you know, in a situation where he happens to be hustling, uh, that he has any smartness or sharpness. You know, they don't want to show that. They want to show a bunch of buffoons and a bunch of clowns, you know, uh, that, that exhibit no intelligence. And all they do is act upon their emotions and they act out through violence. So I think one of the biggest problems, you know, I, I used to tell uh, uh, my nephew, um, Eel, uh, some, some people know him as D, some people know him as Eel, um, that when an individual is in a confrontation with me and, you know, he's roaring and, you know, he's, he's you know, emotional, uh, the reason why it's not necessary for me to go back and forth with that individual because I'm viewing him as a female because he's acting uh, out of his emotions. So a lot of these guys that were raised by their mothers, they saw their mo mothers deal with situations emotionally, acting a certain type of way through emotion because they didn't have no man around to tell them that men don't act like that, that men reason, men think things through because men feel like this is not important enough for me to get emotional about, I need to think this through. That's what men do. But if you don't have a father around expressing to you and telling you that that's what men do, then you're going to act according to what you've seen growing up from a baby all the way into your adulthood. So when I see an individual and he's quick, you know, like this to react in emotion, I already know because I was raised by a man. You know, my mama had a, a little bit of doing, but my father raised me and, you know, uh, uh, into manhood and my also, you know, my aunt and uncle. But because I had man headship around me, I understood that acting a certain kind of way was unmanly. So if I have somebody coming to me and he's roaring, well, he's operating out of his womanhood. He might not know it. But because I've been around a man, I know it. And so it, it would be a disadvantage for me to start back and forth with him because he's mastered that woman stuff. <laughs> I, I, I don't know nothing about it, <laughs> but what I see in a woman. So, you know, I, I'm at a disadvantage. I'm not about to be going back and forth with you roaring and, and you know, what the baby's going to do. You know, you upset and crying about whatever situation that has transpired. You know, you done took all the tears from the baby. So it was it's not necessary for me to go back and forth. You could win the conversation if that makes you feel good. That's just like a guy on the street seeing Bill Gates and he get to cussing at Bill Gates and calling Bill Gates a bunch of, you know, foul words. Bill Gates ain't going to have no conversation with you. He going to let you win the conversation. If that's all it required for him to go back to his billionaire lifestyle is for you to win a little conversation, when you go back to being nothing, he go back to living a billionaire's lifestyle. It's beneath him and it's beneath me too. What, you want to win a conversation because you can call me a, a B and then I respond? The moment I respond, I make you important. The moment I respond to the actions that you have as a female because you want attention. Really, you want my attention. What you you want me to say that you are awesome, that you need validation from me? Because you're reacting in a certain kind of way to get my attention? I can't get you my attention. And so now if it is what you want from me that, that I don't say anything, and then you feel like you are victorious because you've quote unquote shut me down, you can have that. You know, have a wonderful life with your awesome girly self. So, you know, uh, you have to understand that uh, the disadvantage for young black men is that they haven't had their fathers around. So there are some things that you're just not going to understand.
Because you you no match for a person that exercises calm and poise up under, you know, uh, you know, calm under pressure, which is poise. You you I understand why a lot of you guys are intimidated by white people. I, I understand. I'm not. You know, because I can exhibit poise up underneath the pressure. I'm not just saying it. You guys seen it when I was facing life in American Pimp. Didn't budge one bit. Whatever the outcome's going to be, I'm going to be a man through it. So a lot of you are comfortable dealing with guys like yourself who didn't have a father and who are emotional and who are reactionary to emotions. You're comfortable with dealing with each other. You have... You have something relative. Because when you respond out of your emotion, because he's womanized, he's going to respond out of his emotion too. Because he feels somehow this makes him feel powerful. You think about that. Again, go get master of the game. Study it. Learn it. Go get my book, The Road to Paradise. Study it. Read it. Learn it. It's for you. Devour the information. And I'm out.